even though I live in Canada, I can grow pretty much anything outside of tropical fruit trees, which I'm working on. The one crop that has eluded me, however, is the infamous sweet potato. The issue with these guys is we simply can't get the soil warm enough. As a tropical root crop, it's the soil temperature that dictates this vegetable's success. The frustrating part about it is that the propagation of sweet potatoes is super easy. In fact, it's even easier than regular potatoes. So indoor growing is my only solution. Join me in this two-part series where I tackle growing sweet potatoes fully indoors from slip production all the way to harvest. And it starts right now. Sweet potato growing all starts with creating what we call slips. Sweet potatoes are not actually potatoes at all. In fact, they're not even in the nightshade family. They're part of the morning glory group of plants and are actually vine crawlers native to tropical America. I've already covered in a separate video the two popular ways to grow sweet potato slips, but let me give you the quick rundown here. As mentioned, we propagate and grow new sweet potato plants from adventitious shoots called slips. These young shoots pop out of the shoot end of the tuber during storage. Once they're a good size, you can plant them up like you would any small seedling, and within a few weeks, you're going to be at the stage that we're at today. And that's setting up the plants for production. Now that we have very well started sweet potato plants, we're ready for the next steps. And that's discussing our pots, our soil mixture, and setting up our grow area. Let's look at the grow area first. First off, big shout out goes to the guys over at epicledgrowlight.com for helping me out with the Mars Hydro Grow Tent. I initially tried a few test plants for these sweet potatoes indoors, and I could tell right away they were gonna be a failure. This grow tent is exactly what I needed to create the right environmental parameters for sweet potato growing indoors. I already have it all set up for planting, so let's take a closer look at what I did. It's not a game, it's a ranch thing. The SP3000 from Mars Hydro is world class. Check out their link in my description for more information. I know I wanted to insulate the bottom of my grow tent as it's sitting on my cement garage floor, but after a few temperature tests, it became apparent that I needed supplemental heat. A four foot reptile heating pad did the trick nicely. With the grow area all set up, let's head out to the greenhouse to talk about pots and soil. We're gonna need pretty large pots to grow our sweet potatoes in properly. I'd originally intended to grow them in these five gallon fabric grow bags, the same ones I used for my determinate tomatoes this year, but I quickly realized that even these are gonna be too small. So I quickly ordered some of these 10 gallon fabric grow bags, and luckily enough, they arrived yesterday. So with our pots all set up, let's have a look at our soil. Officially, sweet potatoes are said to thrive in what we call a sandy loam. What that means is, they want a soil mixture that's high in organic matter, rich in compost, yet has a 10 to 20% sand component to aid in drainage. Easy enough. You can use any commercial potting mix, add in a few cups of sand, 
and you're all set. Lately, I've had nothing but bad luck bringing store-bought soils indoors, so I put a link in the description below on how you can make your own DIY Ultimate Potting Mix right at home, and that's what I'm going to use today. Making your own potting mix isn't at all hard, and if you check out the link above, I detail it step by step on how you can do it yourself. Always start out with a good base of 50% compost and 50% coconut fiber. With our own potting mix now made up, we can go ahead and add that sand component that we talked about earlier. In addition, sweet potatoes do enjoy a very slightly acidic soil. So, depending on the pH of your current mix, you might want to add a few sprinkles of elemental sulfur. Once your soil is all set up and ready to go, let's go ahead and start filling the pots. I'm going to fill these guys all the way to the top and then compress that soil down a bit and then I'm going to top them off again. Make sure those large pots are good and packed. Now, let's haul these bad boys back inside to their grow area. Nice. I've got the heat on the bottom here uh, to warm up these pots, warm up this soil to at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what sweet potatoes like, that's what they need. As well, I'm gonna go ahead and soak these pots from below for about two hours before we get started planting. Planting the established sweet potato slips is really straightforward. I make a few depressions at distances of about eight inches apart to set up the transplants. 12 inches is the recommended, but I'm aiming for smaller, more numerous sweet potatoes here, so fingers crossed. Taking your established pot in one hand and straddling the stem with your index and middle fingers of the other hand, turn the pot upside down and gently coax it out. Don't pull on the stem, the slips are really quite brittle. Go ahead and place the plant in the depression and grab the next one. Same thing. Just coax these plants out by squeezing the pot to loosen those roots. I'm going to cover up these first two with soil while they're easy to get to before grabbing that third one. Just use that same potting mix, completely burying that stem right up to the first leaves. Pack them in nicely and grab that third plant to finish off the pot. Sweet potatoes are vines, so it's possible that we may have to trellis the foliage at some point. But for now, the plants seem okay. You can't bury sweet potato plants too far, so be generous with that soil mix. Mulching isn't super important here in a closed system like this, but it can't hurt. Besides, Seeing exposed soil bothers me to no end, so mulching it is. Try to use a sterile dry mulch like straw to eliminate the introduction of outside pests. I'm really happy with the way these guys are set up. Now it's just a matter of maintenance for monitoring the heat and light, which you know is automated, so that'll be a breeze and then using the hygrometer function of the pH meter to make sure that the moisture stays even. Hopefully by Christmas, we'll be harvesting some indoor Canadian grown sweet potatoes. Fingers crossed. Also, if any of you are on Facebook, head on over and join our gardening group called Growing Better. 
The group has grown phenomenally fast, yet it will never lose its sense of community or its welcoming feel. If you're passionate about growing epic organic fruits, herbs, and veggies for you and your family, the Growing Better group is a great place to hang out, share, learn, and grow. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind, and I'll see you in the next video.